Welcome back to Face the State. Mr. Schiff, before you get the chance to run against Senator Chris Dodd, you have to beat a couple of Republicans. Actually, there are four others. And I want to get your opinion on some of them. Let's begin with, uh, with Rob Simmons. Why are you a better candidate than him? Well, I mean, I don't know too much about Rob. I've met him a couple times. He seems like an okay guy. But, you know, he's been in Congress before. I think he was six years uh, in the House of Representatives. He didn't really stand out. I didn't know who he was. So, you know, he, you know, I don't know what he's going to do different this time around if we send him to uh, the Senate. I don't see how he's going to be different than a lot of other Republicans who are already there. Um, I think that the nation needs a serious reform. As I said, I think we're headed off the edge of a cliff, and I don't think uh, Simmons is going to be there uh, to make sure that we don't go over the edge. Uh, so I think I'm a, a unique among the candidates who really understands these problems and who is committed to helping solve them. I'm not, you know, I'm not going uh, to the Senate because I want to be a senator. I'm going to the Senate because I don't want the country uh, to, to, to have to experience the economic crisis that we're, gonna, we're headed for if we don't change. Former Ambassador Tom Foley. Again, I, I've only, I think I've just met him once or twice as well. Um, I, I don't really know too much about where he stands on anything. I think he seems like an okay guy. But again, you know, where was uh, Tom Foley? Uh, a few years ago, when I was going on all these television shows warning about this economic crisis, uh, where was Tom? I mean, I mean if he's were operating uh, in, in the financial industry, how come he couldn't see this coming? Linda McMahon? You know, can't take anything away from her, her and her husband. I mean, built a very successful business. Uh, they're good entrepreneurs, but, you know, their business is show business, it's entertainment. I don't necessarily know how that translates into an understanding of the macroeconomic problems that face our nation. Or... And, <clears throat> and finally, Sam Caligiuri. Yeah, you know, I, you know, he seems like a, a nice guy. Uh, I think he's more, a little bit more charismatic, a better speaker at the events that I've spoken to. But I don't know. I mean, he seems kind of young, or actually he's not too much younger than I am. But I don't know that he's uh, got enough support in the state uh, for whatever reason. But, uh, you know, I think I'm still unique. Again, I, I just don't see what the other candidates bring to the table that is so compelling and so different. If the con people of Connecticut send me to the Senate, everybody's going to know I'm there. I mean, I'm not going to be like the other senators. I'm not going to be spending my time trying to get the right assignments to the right committees or trying to raise money to get reelected. I'm going to spend 100% of my time in the Senate filibustering, trying to put a stop to all this legislation that's destroying our economy and try to repeal all the legislation that created these problems in the first place. Right. Peter, you, uh, you just mentioned Linda McMahon, the family's involved in show business, but there is some speculation that you are just doing this to promote yourself. I mean, you have a book out there. Um, you make the rounds on MSNBC and other programs. You have a website. How committed are you really to running for Congress versus is this just getting out there and saying, you know what, I'm going to get my name out there, I'm going, to be, I'm going to have opportunities like this to talk more to people, sell more books, sell myself? Yeah, well, my name is already out there. I'm selling a lot of books anyway. I don't think that running for Senate is giving me any more publicity than I was getting anyway. And I know I'm focused now on politics rather than my business. I'm spending a lot more time running for office than running my company. So I don't think that necessarily running for the Senate is going to, you know, do my company, you know, a a a anything special. I mean, I think my company would probably be better off if I were more focused on it. I think, you know, I think for my clients it's fine, but I think for the growth of my business, I think my business would grow more if I was focused there. But I think that the cause is worth fighting for, and I think the sacrifice is worth making personally. I think that, that the dangers facing our country are, are substantial. And, uh, you know, I have a seven-year-old son. I'd like him to grow up in this country. A lot of other people uh, have young children. You just had a child. I think if we don't change, many of our kids are going to leave. You know, this country was founded by immigrants. People, you know, fled their home countries because we had lower taxes and we had lower regulations. And so people who were smart and industrious came to this country. We're going to chase them out of this country. If we're going to burden them with debt, burden them with taxes and inflation, they're not going to want to stay here. They're going to want to leave. And I want to try to change this country before it comes to that. Peter, as you probably know, the Senate is a place of collaboration. You know, there has to be compromise, people working together. Uh, I find some of the things you say uh, entertaining and interesting when you talk about uh, a massive collapse of the economy, uh, uh, something that's going to destroy everything in its wake. You compare us to the Weimar Republic and Zimbabwe. How do you, and you say you might go to the Senate and filibuster everything, well, I don't know what that does for Connecticut if you become a caricature in the U.S. Senate. I, 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 as a Connecticut resident, I want you to care about problems that we're facing here in Connecticut. And how do you do that yeah. without, without you have this huge agenda to fight 
you know, fight for the free market, but what do you well, do for well, Connecticut? Well, first of all, I'm not comparing the current American economy to Zimbabwe or Weimar Republic Germany, but we're following the same monetary policies. And my warnings are, if we don't change, that's how we're going to end up. Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest issues and the biggest problems confronting people in Connecticut are coming from Washington. They're emanating from Washington. And I want to stop that. I want to stop what the government is doing to make it so mm -hmm. difficult for average uh, people here in, in, in Connecticut. And, you know, when you have all these bailouts and all the stimulus packages and the president and Congress say that, you know, only the rich are going to pay for it, they're not. The average middle class is going to pay for it because it's their wages that are being debased. It's their cost of living is going to well, go up. We are financing this with massive inflation, and that is going to hit the average American voter. And somebody's got to go to uh, Congress and fight for him, so, fight so, for the saver, fight for the worker, fight for the taxpayer. How are you fighting for me if you go down there and oppose federally subsidized student loans and I have three teenagers? Do, do you know the, why? The free market's no, not going to step no, in. No. Do you know why college is so expensive? Well, it's I know why you think. I know no, why you think. No, I know why. It's because I know why of those, you think it is. No, it's because of those subsidized student loans. If students couldn't get subsidized loans, they couldn't borrow all this money. And if they couldn't borrow all this money, colleges couldn't, high, couldn't charge mm -hmm. these high tuitions. So tuition prices would plunge to the point where your kids didn't need to borrow money to go to college, just like my father didn't have mm -hmm. to borrow money or your father didn't have to borrow money. There is no reason that education is getting more expensive. With all of the, the automation and all the computers and all the technology, it should be cheaper today to educate our kids than it was 10 or 20 years ago. The only reason it's not is because of government involvement and guaranteed student loans are a big part of the problem. We have to take another time out. We'll be right back with our final segment in just a moment.